Dr. Fizz here on a theoretical analysis of the displacement current. I'm going to talk about the very special piece that Maxwell added to the equations that we have studied so far and this piece is so important that we name the equations after Maxwell. The displacement current term as it is sometimes called is not the best way to describe it. So we will not use that term and I'll instead refer to this as a piece involving a changing electric field to create a magnetic field. Okay, so let's look at the uh, nice little calculation here that we're going to need for our discussion and that is we're going to need to know the electric field due to an infinite sheet of charge. Now we do this with the Gauss's law and we make an enclosed volume that has a little area and thickness above and below the plate. We pick a rectangular uh, case here. You don't have to, but I like to do a rectangular case here. The main thing is that the electric field pierces the top and bottom parts of the uh, surface and it'll skim the surface on on the edges so when you take the dot product the upward E and the upward vector for the differential area going up will give you a cosine of 0, a 1, they'll work together and on the other side E points down and the differential area element points down always perpendicular to the surface outward away from the uh, enclosure and they will add also and the Q will be the charge inside the volume that I make with this enclosed surface. Well we then get EA at the top and EA at the bottom. A is the area and E is the electric field. Cosine zero in either case and we get then the formula for Q is sigma, the aerial density, times the area. This gives us sigma over 2 epsilon naught. We need to remember this as we will apply it in our analysis of the piece that Maxwell added to Ampere's law. So here we go. For Ampere's law, we have a current traveling along a wire, and we are going to interrupt the current flow by having a gap. Now if we have a gap, then the current starts to charge up this plate, this capacitor. A capacitor can be thought of as two plates that store charge, and we'll take the plates to be large enough that we can apply our infinite sheet of charge uh, calculation that we saw just earlier. Here we have uh, plus piling up and E piling up negative uh, on this side, and the E is getting bigger and bigger you're actually getting an electric field that's growing because the charge is getting greater and greater. Remember you always pick the direction of the E field so if you had a test charge that is positive it would flow along that direction. Well if we uh, do uh, the Ampere's law we get the magnetic field here and here and here and here. Would you have a magnetic field here and here? We'll stay outside the plates so that we're a distance R away outside the plates. Well, you see, Maxwell knew that if you change the magnetic flux, you get an electric field. That is Faraday's law. So he was wondering here, since this electric flux is changing, I wonder if you could get a magnetic field. In other words, the reverse. So let's look at this. If we look at the electric field for the uh, plate on either side you have this formula and since the electric field for each plate in the middle is going to add you know test charge will want to go away from the bottom one up to the top one we double this and that gives us the electric field inside the plates so we have the charge density Q over A and this is our electric field and we're going to calculate the change in the flux. The flux by definition is whatever we're looking at times the area that it pierces through. In this case it's electric flux. So we'll use the E times A. A is the area of each plate. And the derivative 
if we replace first the e is sigma over epsilon sub naught and this is a what's going to be affected here is the q because c sigma times a is q and if you take the derivative with respect to t on the q you get the current as the charge is piling up so q is changing and this result if we make the bold statement that the magnetic field should also be mu naught i outside those plates Maxwell's genius here even though there's no actual I going through there but instead there's a change in electric flux then the change of the electric flux with respect to time to get the mu here and get rid of this thing I need to have I need to multiply this by mu epsilon mu dot epsilon naught that will kill the epsilon naught and give me a mu and we boldly state that that must be true to keep the magnetic field the same. So if we do that, we add the piece to the equation that does that, and this is the piece that Maxwell added, and the changing electric flux will create the magnetic field, and a changing magnetic flux will create electric field, and this makes possible electromagnetic waves. A very, very important piece. We are finished. Here are the Maxwell equations. There's four of them named after Maxwell because of this piece that he added and the Lorentz force law.